Hello, I'm Guy, and this is Guy Robot. Hello, so another unboxing, as I bought far too much stuff recently to try and get sorted and settled down into university. As you know from one of my early videos, all my Apple stuff is going. It's a fire sale of Apple. But what am I going to replace it with? I have been umming and ahhing. I could buy a £200 GP Windows laptop. The bulk of what I'm going to be doing is on this beast behind me. I have 56 cores, a stupid amount of RAM, crazy disk I.O. This is where I'm going to do most of my work. But if I'm at uni in a lecture, I don't really like taking notes on a tablet. In fact, it sucks. Unless I'm going to spend like £1,500 on a Surface, but I'm not doing that because that's equally nuts. So I need something for really boring stuff. Email, web browsing, just the basics. I'd also like to be able to get into this machine remotely so I could potentially do VPN and remote desktop access. And potentially a little bit of software development if I'm going to be doing any basic C programming for some of the robotics stuff that I'm working on until I get started properly on my thesis in a couple of months' time. So what to go for? Well, the only real requirement that I had is no hard disk, because hard disks suck. Even if it's kind of a rubbish memory card, pseudo SSD as they chuck in at the cheap end, that's the main thing. And I thought, what about a Chromebook? I mean, what about a Chromebook? I thought that'd be cool to have. I mean, Chrome, I've used it since day one of it first being publicly available. And 99% of what I do is on the web. Plus, I can hack it and I can run Linux. So, Chromebook? Ooh. Chromebook. Now, my experience with a Chromebook is the sum total of mm, 30 seconds in a shop. I got as far as opening Chrome going, ha, huh, that kind of looks like Chrome. Then rebooting it and going, oh, it does boot in seven seconds. And then I looked at specs and I found the Chromebook I wanted which I don't think is made anymore. I couldn't find it almost anywhere. I had to chase down this one model. I wanted it to be aluminium. I wanted it to have um, 32 gig of disk space. I wanted it to have four gig of RAM. And I wanted it to be at least a 30 inch screen. So it's the Acer Chromebook 14, which matches all of that. I have yet to test this. I've never seen this in the flesh. I don't know what it feels like. And I've just spent 230 pounds on it. It prices, according to the sticky label on the side, that it runs the Google Chrome operating system with an Intel Celeron N3060, a 14 inch Acer HD Comfy View LCD, Intel HD graphics, four gig of RAM, 32 gig EMC, no optical drive, wireless LAN, uh, a camera with a wide viewing angle and a three cell LiPo battery. Also, warning, batteries may explode. Keep seeing that on lots of things these days. In fact, at university today, we got shown the cupboard where you put batteries before they explode. But I think it's time to open this. So I think that might segue quite nicely into an unboxing. Since this is such a lightweight one and such a small one, I'm going to actually unbox this on my lap rather than doing a cut. Also, that saves me set all my camera stuff up in a different location. Oh, well, the first thing to say about this is I avoided the sticky label. That is annoying. Right. Uh, do, 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 do. And open sesame. So my first thought is, this is crazy light. Inside the box, there's a couple of bits of paper, what looks like a charger. These phonetic cartons, I strangely like this material. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, and here it is, my Chromebook. It's lightweight. Uh, before opening it, I would say this feels very similar in weight to my Mac Air I had in 2013. 
I would say from looking at it that they found my Mac Air from 2013, cloned it, and made it just a little bit thicker. Now, I think this might be a tad thicker, but we've got two USB 3 ports and an HDMI port on the side, a Kingston lock socket if we need it. We've got audio output, power input, and some LEDs. We've got stereo speakers on the bottom. Ooh, did that peel off? No, don't peel that off. Chrome logo. Some sticky labels, Apple style. And a laptop. And some Spanish. Importante leer. So, ordenador, portatil, tablata, este conectado. No, wrong language. Um, your notebook must be plugged in to activate the battery before you turn it on. The first time start has been set up for your operating system it may take 30 minutes. Please be patient during this process. So, while we wait to do that. Other important things are 14 hour battery life, it's ultra thin and it's got fast Wi-Fi. My first impression is this is a MacBook Air. I mean look at the keyboard. This is a MacBook Air. It's a tiny bit heavier but this is a MacBook Air. And I'm okay with that. Um, I mean it's it's not the same build quality as MacBook Air. It feels nice. It does feel nice. This was two hundred pounds. My MacBook Air was like fifteen hundred pounds when I bought it. Um, you can tell on the hinge. There's a bit of plastic or a bit of aluminium that extends below the screen to save money and to make it smaller. Whereas if that was an Apple product, it would be all in one. Um, the keyboard has got a slight plasticky feel about it. Oh, uh, and annoyingly, it's just one touchpad thing. Now, Apple did an amazing job for a no button touchpad, and I still hated it. So I have a feeling I'm not going to be over the moon with this. But hey, it's Chrome. I don't need much more. And unlike Apple, it's got real proper crosshead screws in the bottom. Don't know what I'm going to use that for. Maybe I can put an SSD in. I have no idea. I've not looked on the teardown for it. Um, but yeah, this looks like a... Mac Air. It feels like a copy of, but still close to a Mac Air. And it's £200. So I'm impressed so far. So what we're going to do now is pop that over there and go through the rest of the box. Also in here we have got some manuals, a warranty, Declaration of conformity, a bunch of EU stickers, and what I was actually looking for, a charger. I just realised I don't have a laptop bag, might need to get one of those. Um, so, we may well have a jump cut here in a second, because what I'm going to do is reposition the camera so we can film me turning this on for the first time. There it is, all set up and good to go on my desk. The only thing that worries me a little bit is the piece of paper that says it will be half an hour before I can use the thing. I'm all for downloading new components and maybe freshening up or doing updates over what's already on there. But waiting half an hour before I can use a new gadget is not something I'm a great fan of. Thankfully, the warning was a little stark, and actually it was only about 10-15 minutes I had to wait. Nonetheless, I felt slightly resentful sat there for 15 minutes while not a lot was happening. All I could think was, I could have the whole of Windows installed right now, and instead, I'm waiting 15 minutes for a glorified web browser. But, at least it wasn't the full half an hour. While we wait for that to go through... The other impressions of actually turning this machine on and using it are the keyboard's actually pretty nice. I do suddenly find myself missing either a Mac command or a Microsoft Windows key on the keyboard. And it's a bit weird going back to such an old school keyboard layout, but it's quite responsive. And the trackpad as well. No button, yet I didn't notice for quite a long time, which is testament to how well it actually works. Even Apple's lack of a physical button frustrated me pretty quickly, and this is not bad considering. The one thing though, as soon as it does boot up and get into Chrome OS, that you really notice how bad the screen is compared to a higher end device. It's not terrible, it's just lacking definition and it's a bit blurry. The webcam as well, trying to set up for initially getting onto the thing, also isn't great. 
it's good enough, I suppose, what I'm going to use it for, though. It can access the internet unsurprisingly well. However, I did get a little bit worried doing a speed test, only pulling down 10, 11 megabit a second. Thankfully, this actually showed up an issue I had in my wireless access point, and some further testing later on got me about 150 megabit a second upstairs, which is good. Overall, it just works. It boots up super quick. We are talking seven seconds, and it's pretty much like being in Chrome. There was a weird option, though, where you can make the resolution bigger than it actually is, which I tried at the end of this video. However, it's terrible, and you can't actually read any text on it. So wouldn't recommend doing that if I was setting one up. So I have had the Acer CB3 14-inch Chromebook for two weeks now, pretty much of daily use. It has replaced what was my MacBook Pro. Well, I say it's replaced it. Also, the giant beast of a workstation behind me has replaced it. And they do serve very different purposes now. All the bulk of my work, I do down here. If I'm at university, or if I just want to use something when I'm watching TV, I've got this. And it's not bad for 200 quid. First time I've actually used Chrome OS. So this is a kind of double review slash feedback, I guess. One of the things is, what's Chrome OS like to use? And the other is, what's this actual Chromebook like? Well, I guess, first of all, let's talk about this Chromebook. It definitely wants to be a Mac Air. It's not. But it's not a bad copy. It's heavier than a Mac Air. There's also a couple of things you might have noticed on the unboxing video. There was a lovely sticker emphasising all of the wonderful Acer information on it there. Unfortunately, it wasn't an easy peel sticker, and it's taken me no end of time to get the sticky stuff off. That was really horrible. The screen is also awful. <sighs> I use the term with problems, though, because I am coming from a background where I've had ridiculously high-resolution screens. I'm used to a massively high pixel density, so it's not really fair to say that it's terrible. The screen on this thing certainly isn't as good as I would have liked. Yes, it will do 720p. Yes, it is what Chromebooks tend to call a high resolution screen, but no, it's just not. It's not really any better than a screen I had on a laptop 10 years ago. It might even be slightly worse, but it is cheap. For what I've used it for, it's okay, but without a doubt, the screen is what lets this down. However, it's 200 pound laptop. In reality, I'm expecting it to be no better than I guess a 200 pound tablet and it's probably on par with that I don't know my tablet costs more than that other than that well the battery life is excellent I literally charged this thing twice and for the amount I've used it that's worked really well the wi-fi on it again works really well I don't get a full two 300 meg internet out of it but I get 150 megabit a second over the wi-fi on this now when you take into account the fact that all I'm really doing is web browsing and I don't need to download a lot, maybe some streaming, 150 megaseconds is an awful lot, so it's fine. So overall, as far as the device goes, for a £200 laptop with an all-day battery, or using it as I do, a week-long battery, decent Wi-Fi, and an all-right screen, yeah. I can't complain. It looks nice. Most of those laptops at £200 look like a kid's toy. And this doesn't. This looks like a laptop. I like the fact it's got a little Google Chrome logo on it. That says to people, yeah, I'm a geek. And I'm quite happy with that. And there are some nice things about it. The keyboard is okay. Again, it's trying to be an air clone. It's not amazing, though. Uh, I do tend to find that some of the key press I do don't tend to be as responsive as I'd like. But it's better than most of those £200 laptops. So, all in all, the Acer CB3, as far as the hardware and laptop itself goes, for running Chrome OS, yeah, it gets a thumbs up. This thing is really good. I mean, I'm trying to sound excited here, but the truth is, it's functional, and that's what it needs to be. It's very functional to its price. Am I disappointed at buying this Chromebook? No. Would I like to have more laptops for my money? Yes, but I think that's me getting ahead of myself. This is a budget laptop, and for a budget laptop, this over delivers. Well, what about Chrome OS itself? 
To be honest, I thought I was going to be installing Linux straight away, but I haven't. I've actually done more with it than I thought. In my mind, it was still just going to be a web browser, but Chrome OS has certainly come on since its humble beginnings. There's a fair few things you can do on it now. You can get Microsoft Remote Desktop Client. There's even the Chrome built-in remote desktop. So I've actually been able to sit in university and access my beta machine behind me and run MATLAB for doing complex simulations, all remotely. The VPN capabilities within it allow you to connect to remote network. I haven't tried it yet, but I have read through it. However, Chrome doesn't make it that easy, but you can get a VPN up and running on it. All in all, it's been pretty good. Some of the things I've put it through, I mean, I run Evernote on it for taking notes. I use Office 365 online for doing word processing. I haven't needed to do any note taking offline other than with Evernote, which works fine. I went to press print and thought, ah, bugger, there's no printer drivers. What am I going to do? And a really quick Google told me to go to Chrome because such as devices on my main computer, tick which prints I wanted to share, and bang, available on all my Google devices, which means I can actually just print anywhere from my laptop to my network printer upstairs. That is incredibly easy. That's easier than setting up most Windows network printing. So absolutely massive kudos for that. The only thing I did have a bit of problem with was connecting to one particular Wi-Fi network that was using uh, people authentication. And it was a bit iffy with the settings it wanted for that. But I did get it connected in the end. For all normal forms of network connection, I use that in terms of your home network for most businesses, it's fine. So is Chrome OS for me? I think so. I like the fact I can boot quickly. It's super quick. And nine times out of ten, what I want to do is be looking at a web page. And Chrome OS lets me do that. But there's something inside me that says, I don't want to be in this walled garden. You know, Microsoft set up their walled garden of infrastructure way back in the 90s. And everyone complained. And Google is doing it with this. For noble intentions, it's for incredibly good battery life and for simplicity, but I'm not sure I like being trapped in it any more than I do being in Apple or iOS. So I think I am going to install Linux on it and do a comparison. If the battery life doesn't stack up or the boot times are massively higher, I'm going to stick with Chrome OS. If however that's worth the trade-off, I'm going to be running Linux on it. We'll have to see how it goes. So I will be doing a future video on installing Linux natively on this, not just CH routing it. And we'll see how well it goes. That's even if I can. I haven't actually done enough research into this specific model to see how well it works. So I guess the question is, if I could go back again, would I buy a Windows or Chrome OS laptop? And I don't know, is the annoying answer. At this price point, I suspect the answer would remain Chrome OS. Because the laptop looks nicer than almost any Windows laptop in the price range. And if you forget booting natively into Linux for a second, the boot times are crazily quick, seven seconds. Now, the cheap quality SSDs that go into these things to produce them for this price are not super speedy. So to cold boot in seven seconds is a phenomenal achievement and can't really be achieved on a low-end Windows device. And for me, that's what I want most at the moment. So with a couple of weeks in, yeah, I would buy this again. If I had a bit more money, we're talking... We're talking double in reality, £400. Well, at that point, I can get a better SSD, a real SSD, and probably a bit more RAM, and then I might as well get a Windows 1 and dual boot it with Linux. However, for this price mark, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So, if you are considering a cheap way to get a laptop, you've already got a computer to do the bulk of your work, or you don't need a powerhouse of a computer, then Chrome OS is for you. And as far as Chromebooks go, having not tried the Pixel, which I suspect is an entirely different ball game, would like to try one though. But forgetting the Pixel for a moment, this is my favourite. Some of the other ones were plastic, they were cheap, they weren't as nice, the screens were too small. This has the best balance for me of style, practicality, battery life, speed. I've got 4 gig of RAM, which, although not amazing, is good for a Chromebook, and 32 gig SSD. So, not bad, 200 quid. Overall verdict, happy with it. Would I change it? Not at the moment. Am I looking forward to trying to put Linux on it? You bet.
I have no idea if this has been a remotely useful review, but it's been an interesting experience for me switching from Mac OS to Chrome OS as my main kind of mobile operating system. And I've got lots of tinkering I can do in the future. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't, if it was the worst review ever of Chrome OS, which it could well be, then hit this like, leave a comment below. If you loved it and really enjoyed this video and want me to tinker around with more shiny gadgets, hit like and leave a comment below. And it would be fantastic if you could subscribe to support my channel. So hit that button now. I'm Guy and I'll catch you next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Please check out some of my other videos and don't forget to subscribe.